are now on the second part of our discussion on mathematics as a language. So today we are going to discuss mathematical what is mathematical reasoning? Um, it refers to the ability of a person to analyze problem situations and construct logical arguments to justify his process or hypothesis to create both conceptual foundations and connections. So it's very important of course that when you um, argue uh, it, it has to be logical following the rules of logic. Okay, so we have two kinds of um, reasoning. We have the um, inductive inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. What is the difference between the two? So for deductive reasoning, what happens there is from a general principle, you now use that to prove the special case. And this, for, for the inductive reasoning, what happens is if it is true for the special case, you try to generalize it for the entire thing. So for us to be able to understand more about the uh, about deductive and inductive reasoning, let us watch this video. Let's conduct an experiment. Consider a basket full of mangoes. You want to check whether they are raw or ripe. One can find out by observing the mangoes individually. So we start the process. We pick up a mango from the basket and observe it. Let's say we find the mango to be raw. Then we pick up another mango from the basket, observe it and find that that's raw as well. Based on this, many of us would conclude that all the mangoes in the basket are raw. What exactly are we doing here? We examined a couple of mangoes in the basket and accordingly arrived at a general conclusion. What is the conclusion? We generalize the idea by saying that all the mangoes in this basket are raw. So by observing a specific outcome of the experiment, we concluded the observation in a generalized form. This approach of reasoning from specific to general is called as inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is logically true but may or may not be realistically true. What does that mean? Let's consider an example. Statement 1 says that the mango is a fruit and statement 2 says the box is full of fruits. We try to draw a conclusion from these two statements. From these statements, we draw the conclusion that the box is full of mangoes. Here, statements 1 and 2 are true but the conclusion drawn although logically true, can be false if the basket contains any other fruit apart from mangoes. It's logically true, but not definitely true. So that was inductive reasoning. On the other hand, we have deductive reasoning where the approach is from a general argument to a specific conclusion. And unlike inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning is always true. For example, statement 1 says that all mangoes are fruits and statement 2 says that all fruits have seeds. What conclusion can we draw from these two statements? We can draw a conclusion saying mangoes have seeds. Here statements 1 and 2 are true and the conclusion will also always be true. All mangoes have seeds. So the two examples give us a clear idea about inductive and deductive reasoning. Take a few seconds to review both the cases. Now, let's go back to inductive reasoning. Did you know that inductive reasoning is frequently used in mathematics? By observing the pattern that exists in a particular case, we induce a general conclusion from that outcome. The conclusion we arrive at based on inductive reasoning is called as conjecture. Conjecture is a hypothesis that has not been proven. Just because we observe a pattern in many cases doesn't mean it holds true for all cases. Conjectures must be proved for that particular case. To prove such conjectures, the principle of mathematical induction is used. Let's discuss about it in Alright, so let's now go on to the exact definition of arguments.
Okay, an argument is a group of statements including one or more premises that are all assumed to be true and one and one and only one conclusion. What is a premise? A premise is a statement in an argument that provides reason or support for the conclusion. So basically, whenever you have an argument, it is of this form. You have you have like P1, P2, and so on. Let's say P n of those. These are the premises. Premises. And they are all assumed to be true. Now what they want to do is if these premises are true, what they want to show is that the conclusion must be true. Alright? Now, how do I know if an argument is valid or invalid? What is the meaning first of the word valid here? Okay, we say that an argument is valid. Take note that these are our premises. Whenever this statement, meaning to say, Take note, we have end. What is this saying? This is saying is that if the premises are all true, does it follow that the conclusion is true? Okay? So, if this statement is a tautology, meaning to say it is always true, then that's the case that we say that something is a, is a valid argument. There are I will give you um, an example of an invalid argument, okay? So, for you to be able to know the difference between valid and invalid. Okay, one invalid statement, let's say, just like in, in, in inductive reasoning, it was mentioned a while ago that um, it doesn't mean that it is true for specific patterns. It means that it is true for the general case, right? So, for example, I we have the statement... Um, um, some people are reckless. And then we have uh, faith is a person. Therefore, faith is reckless. Now, this is an example of an invalid statement. Why? Because we just say that some people are reckless. So, if we represent it using a diagram, uh, what will happen here? This is the set of... And then it's set of reckless people. Uh, reckless. And then here, this is people. Okay? So, it's just saying that some people, it doesn't say that all Okay, it should say that everyone are reckless. So, this is the set of, this is the set of reckless people. Okay? Now, faith, F can be here because she is a person. Or, she can also be here. Right? So, therefore, we do not really know whether the statement, so this one, we do not know whether it is true or it is false. We do not know. Okay? We do not know if it is true. We do not know if it is false as well. So therefore, this is an example of an invalid um, statement, uh, argument. Okay? Whereas when you say that something is valid, another way of, another way of saying that is if the premise is true, just like what I wrote here, the conclusion, we must be sure that the conclusion must be true. Okay? Now, so let's look at this example. If you listen, you will hear what I am saying. Take note that we can write this in the form of a proposition, right? This is an implication. What would be your hypothesis? Your hypothesis is you listen, correct? And what would be your conclusion? You will hear, correct? 
So, all right. So, therefore, this one. So, this statement over here, we can write it as if you listen, then you will hear. And then, this is premise one. This is the first premise. Premise two, you are listening. Now, what conclusion can we make from here? Alright, so before I give the answer, okay, let's look at this. So remember, this premise, all of them are considered to be true. So let's look at premise one. Listen and then hear. This entire statement is true. But the second statement, you are listening. So therefore, this part here is true. Now, what can we conclude if the premise is true and the conclusion? And what, what can we conclude about the conclusion? Take note that this is a statement right here. This is either true or false. Can it be false? Take note that if the conclusion is false, that would mean we have TF. Remember, for an implication, if the premise is true but the conclusion is false, that would make the entire statement false, correct? Let me just write it. It's like this is the the truth. I mean, this is the truth table. P Q and then this is for P implies Q, right? But it cannot be false, right? Because we already know that this statement here is true. So, therefore, this is not possible. Okay? So, the only possibility is that you can hear this for, for the entire statement to be true. So, therefore, that is our conclusion based on this argument. So, our conclusion is that you are, you will hear, sorry, you will hear, you will hear what I am saying. Okay? So there you go. That's our conclusion. You hear what I am saying. Okay. So these are the statements that we had earlier. The premise and our conclusion. So therefore, what is the form of our argument earlier? We had the state, the premise P implies Q. Then the second premise is P. What was our conclusion? Our conclusion was that Q. This is one, this is the argument that we had. And this is what we call modus ponens. Now, this is one of the rules of inference that we will be discussing. Okay, so earlier we already had modus ponens. Again, this is the form of that. I just interchange the two anyway, they're interchangeable. So you have P implies we have a, an implication and the hypothesis is known to be true. Therefore, this conclusion over here must be true. Example, let us find the conclusion for this argument. If it's a nice day, if it it's if it's a nice day, we'll go to the beach. It is a nice day. Therefore, what would be our conclusion? We will go to the beach. We will go to the beach. Next. What if we have something like this? M and N. M and N implies not P. We do not need to know what M, N, and P stands for. M and N is true. Therefore, look at but look at the form of this. You just have an implication here with this. This is the hypothesis and this is the conclusion. But the hypothesis is true. Therefore, what can you conclude? By modus ponens, the conclusion, not T, must be true. Okay? So the reasoning here is by modus ponens. Alright, warning. 
take note that a valid argument can lead to an incorrect conclusion if one of its premises is wrong or false. Remember, what, what this is saying is that you can have a valid argument, but you have an incorrect conclusion because what happened? One of the premises is false. Because remember, in an argument, our assumption is that all the premises must be true, correct? So here is an example. This is your P implies Q, right? And then this is P, right? Therefore, what would be your conclusion? Your conclusion is that this part here must be true. But is this, this, is this statement true? No, because 2 is not greater than 9 over 4. So what happened? This, this statement here is valid, but it has an incorrect conclusion. So this one, incorrect, incorrect conclusion. But the whole thing is a valid argument. What went wrong? What went wrong there? This statement here is false. Okay. So remember, if you want to make a valid argument, the, all the premises must be true. Okay. Another example of, another rule of inference would be addition. Addition simply says that you have a statement and then you add another statement, P or Q. That is your conclusion. Now take note, I just want to show you why. Remember, what do, when do we say that we have a valid argument? Take note, I, I didn't mention pala that rules of inference, all of those arguments would be valid. Let's just show that this is a valid argument by constructing a truth table. Remember, earlier we said that we have a valid argument. If we have the premises, we get the conjunction of them and then the conclusion and then show that this must be a tautology. Let's do that here. Meaning to say, we want to show that the statement P, this is the only premise, the right? implies the conclusion is P or Q. We want to show that this is a tautology. Let's make a, a what's this? Let's make a truth table for that. P, Q, we need P or Q, and then lastly, P implies P or Q. P or Q, true, 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 false. P implies P or Q. What's our premise? This one. It will always be true. And then this is our conclusion. Let me just highlight that so that it's easy for us to see. Okay. So, when is the premise true but the conclusion is false? None, right? Right? There is no rule na TF, correct? So, everything here is true. So, therefore, this is really a tautology. Okay? So, you can check if you want to practice some more on your truth tables. You can check that all the rules of inference are valid arguments. So, again, let's go back to addition. What this is saying is that if you have a premise and then you add, your conclusion is that you can add another statement using the conjunction Okay, so therefore, let's look at this example. I have a computer. What would be a conclusion that we can have from this one? We can say, you can add any statement with the conjunction or. Let's say, I have a computer or today is a Saturday. Anything. Next rule that we have is simplification. So for simplification, what happens there? You have an end statement, okay? Your conclusion is that one of the premises must be 
true because remember your 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 this is a premise so therefore it's true but for this one to be true right both of them must be true actually you can also have it can also be of this form p and q therefore q the point here is that whenever you have a proposition with the end con connective your conclusion is that one of I, I mean both of them actually are true okay so for example what would be a, a, a conclusion here using the rule of simplification i have a cat and a dog conclusion we can have i have a cat that's a conclusion by simplification it can also be can also have what's another conclusion for this i have a dog right let's look at this example you have take note we have a proposition joined by end right what would be a conclusion here the conclusion by simplification can be R implies S. Or it can also be, let's erase that. It can also be not T. Correct? Okay. Next, conjunction. Meaning to say, you already have premises. Remember, all of these are true, right? Because these are premises. So therefore, a conclusion would be, you can just conjoin them using end. Alright? P and Q. Of course, this is true because these two components are true. So for instance, I have a cat. I have a dog. The conclusion would be, conjoin them. I have a cat and a dog. Alright? Next. We have S implies T, N or R. What is our conclusion here? Just join the two sentences. S implies T and N or R. Okay? Modus tollens. So for modus tollens, this is actually the contrapositive, right? Remember, if you have P implies Q, for modus ponens, ponens, what's happening there is that this is this entire thing is true, right? The premise is true. What's your conclusion? I will use um, orange for the conclusion. The conclusion is that the conclusion Q is true. Whereas for tolens, it's actually like this. Um, you're getting the contrapositive. What is the contrapositive of P implies Q? The contrapositive is not Q implies not P, right? Therefore, in our premise, not Q is true, right? Okay? And then, what is our conclusion? If this whole thing is true, the conclusion must be true. So that's why you have not P here, alright? You can also think of it this way. If you have P implies Q, this is true. If not Q is true, that means Q is false, right? What can we now say about P? It's either true or false. But it cannot be true because you would have premise is true, but the conclusion is false. That would, that would make the entire statement false. So therefore, this is not possible. This is the only possibility for the premise P to be false. So that's why if premise P is false, the conclusion not P is true. Understand? Okay. So therefore, let's look at the examples. If I walk to school, I will be late. You have, this is walk to school, walk to school, then late. Alright? And then you have the, I was not late. Correct? Correct? The negation of the conclusion. What is now our conclusion by modus tollens? I did not walk to school. 
Okay, next. M implies B and C, but you have the negation of your conclusion here. What is now our conclusion in our argument? The answer is the negation of your premise, not M. For hypothetical syllogism, what this is saying is that you have like a, a chain. You have P implies Q, but Q implies R. Therefore, what will be our conclusion there? P implies R. Okay? So, for example, if he wins the lottery, he will buy a house. If he buys a house, he will go abroad. What would be our conclusion? So, this is like the connection between the two, right? So, here, what this is saying is that they are connected by this one. The conclusion here became the hypothesis here. Alright? So, therefore, what's our conclusion? If he wins the lottery, he will go abroad. Okay? For this one. X and N implies not T, but take note, not T implies A or B. What's our conclusion? X and N implies A or B. Okay? Next, disjunctive syllogism. What is disjunctive syllogism? Um, what is that saying? Okay, so you have, uh, you have two sentences joined by or. What this is saying is that not P is true. Remember, these are all true. Not P is true. That means what can we say about P? P must be false, correct? But remember, this entire thing is true. What can you now say about Q? Q must be true, right? You cannot have Q to be false because if you have, if Q is false, if Q is false there, you would have false, false. Therefore, the entire statement would be false, which contradicts our assumption that it is true. Understand? Let me just release that. Okay. So, what this is saying is that if you have a sentence joined by or and one of them is already known to be false, that means that the other statement must be true. You have no other option. Okay? So, for instance, he is handsome or smart. Or, this is or, but he is not handsome. What is your conclusion? Then he must be smart. Clear? Okay? But take note, if you have, um, he is handsome or smart, and then I will change this to he is handsome. Can we say that he is smart? No. We, we do not know whether it is true or false because if you have p or q then this is true q the other statement is either true or false in either way this right because one of them is already true eh? so it doesn't really matter what happens with q whether it is true or false in both cases the entire statement p or q would still be true so that's why you cannot conclude that he is smart. Understand, we do not know whether it is true or false. That is not a valid argument. Okay? Next. Z or X implies Y, but we know that Z is false, right? Because not Z is true. What is our conclusion? This part here must be true. Okay? Next. Resolution. So for resolution, what happens here? 
you have premises, both of them are or, but then let's look at this. For the or part, you have one here and then the negation here. So what's your conclusion there? You can join these two by or. For example, he is handsome or smart. He is not handsome or rich. Look at this. They are joined by or. And they have handsome, not handsome. So they, it's like they cancel each other. Understand? What is our conclusion? He is smart or rich. Okay. Let's identify the rules of inference used in each of the following arguments. Kiko is a math major and a statistics major. Therefore, Kiko is a math major. Let's say this is M, math major, and statistics major. This is S. Write it first in its form. M and S. Therefore, M, right? So we have M and S. Therefore, M. What rule of inference is that? That is simplification, right? Okay, next. John stayed up late last night. If John stayed late, late last night, then he will be sleepy in class. John stayed up late last night. Therefore, he will be sleepy in class. Let us write it in its form. So let's say this part here stayed up late. Okay, so late. Then he will be sleepy. Okay. Another premise, John stayed up late. Therefore, he will be sleepy. What is the form of that? This is modus ponens, right? Next example, if the Jimmy strike is today, the university will suspend class. Let me just, I will no longer write it in terms of letters. Let's just try. strike. If we have strike, then no class suspend. The university did not suspend. Therefore, the Jimmy strike is not today strike today let's just say therefore no strike today i'll write it in in letter so that it's be, it will be easier for you let's say strike today t na lang t implies suspension s not no suspension therefore not today what is that? You have an implication. The negation of the conclusion is true. Therefore, the negation of the premise is true. What is this? This is modus tollens. Next, if I get stressed, I eat a lot. Let's write that. Stressed, then eat a lot. If I eat a lot, then I get fat. Therefore, if I get stressed, then I will get fat. Look at the form. You have a chain here. They're connected by E. This is hypothetical syllogism. Next, Anna is a human resource management major the same each that's the premise therefore anna is either a human resource ma management major or a computer applications major what happened here this is addition right next if you have a current network password um password na lang then you can log on to the network. Next, you have a current network password. 
therefore you can log on to the network what is this you have a premise uh, i mean uh, a, an implication the hypothesis is true their conclusion is that the conclusion here must be true what is that modus ponens all right so lastly what we're going to do is we will show that the following argument is valid okay so we have here a series of premises okay and we have a conclusion how do we show that the following argument is valid of course if we will make truth tables it will be very very long right so the reason why we have the rules of inference is so that we can show that an argument is valid by using those rules all right because we already know that the rules of influence uh, the, the rules of um inference are valid arguments so if you just connect everything using valid arguments then that means the entire thing is valid okay so how can we do that so first step is to translate it into propositional logic for example so i just wrote here in terms of letters s it is the statement it is sunny c it is colder than yesterday w we will go swimming t we will take a canoe trip in each we will be home by sunset all right for our next step we will now state the hypothesis using the representations that we had so let's start with the first one it is not sunny this afternoon so it is not sunny and and it is colder than yesterday so see i'm looking at this we will go swimming only if now take note that we have the word only if so in our previous lesson what is the meaning of what's the difference between star only if and heart and star if heart so if you have star if heart that means you start with after if right heart implies star so therefore for only if it's the opposite so meaning to say you really start with star with this one okay so therefore we will go swimming so that's w implies sunny if we go swimming then it must be sunny next if we do not go swimming so not w then we take a canoe trip and lastly if we take a canoe trip then we will be home by sunset okay so these are our hypothesis what we want to do is to connect use this four premises to go to arrive at our conclusion which is we will be home by sunset okay let us now go to our rules of inference so remember that what we want to do is to arrive at our conclusion which is h all right so what i will do to do this is to do it backwards because we already know where we want to go that is h if we look at if we look at our our hypothesis here i wrote them down here in order to arrive h we need it only appears here right so we need to use t implies h medyo tatahiin ko siya dito okay this is like the scratch paper um where will i like that here muna h okay i need to use t implies h oops t implies h and then for me to conclude h dapat i should have t right by modus ponens if t is true t implies h then h i need to get a t where does t occur here not w i can only get the t is true it appears here not w implies t when will you know that t is true if not w is true this is backwards ha huh? 
And where will you get not W? Where does W occur? Here. So, backwards. So, we have W implies S. How can I get not W here? I want the negation of this. Modus tollens, right? If we have not S. Okay? So, there, where is not S there? It appears here. So, therefore, I will really start here. So, this is like an overview. Now, for you to be able to see the what's going on, I will now show it in its proper order. So, we will start with not S and C. This is one of our hypotheses. And then, let's look at this one. I want to get not S. From not S and C, how can I get not S? How can I get not S? So I'll call this step one. Not S. Why? This came from simplification of one, right? Remember, if you have sentences joined by end, then your conclusion is that one of them is true. Okay? Actually, both of them. Better you just need one in this case. And then, I'm working my my way backwards and then three i will now use w implies s i am now here okay w implies s um where is that that is from our hypothesis and then what did we do earlier we will now we can now get not w where did that come from because, look at this, W implies S, but we have not S. So, what's our conclusion there? Not W. Correct? You have an implication, and then the conclusion is false. That means the premise here is false. That is modus tollens. 4. Why do we want 4? We are now... Here, correct? We already have not W, so we will now use not W implies T, which is one of our hypotheses. Not W implies T. Hypothesis. So that is 5. Okay. And then, why do we want not W? We want to get T, right? Where does that come from here? Not W, and then not W implies T. What is that? By modus ponens, correct? We conclude that T must be true. So we have here T. Modus ponens of 4 and 5. Maybe I should write that there. Ito, modus tollens of 2 and 3. And then lastly, we have our hypothesis T implies H. Therefore, from 6 and 7, modus ponens of that. We now get our desired conclusion. So that is how you show that the following, the, the, the tr truthfulness of uh, the validity of an argument. So this is an if this is an this is a valid argument. Okay, so that ends our lesson in mathematics as a language.